Namaste, gods, goddesses, and emissaries of light. This is Dr. Shreya Tayan of Rimathea. And if you are new to my channel, please like, subscribe, and do not forget to hit that notification bell so you can be updated on my latest and my current videos. Welcome, 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 everyone. This is my first official video since the passing of my beautiful mother. I am just overwhelmed in my feelings, my emotions, my thoughts, etc. Okay. Now, the only thing that has kept me grounded is that I am a deaf doula. So I know the truth about death. <laughs> The truth about death is there is no death, okay? It's just an illusion. When we end our life here, we begin our life somewhere else of our own choosing. Our soul chooses this place, just like it chose this place for us in this incarnation. Okay, now, I want to be very specific. <clears throat> this message is for the chosen ones and the chosen ones only. If you decided to click on this video, you are either a chosen one or a star seed. And there is a difference between the two. I don't have time to explain all of that on this video. Google it if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and get into this thing that we're talking about right now. So 666 is what is known as the sign of the wild beast. It is a man's number. Okay, we're six carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Okay, that makes up the human being. And it's no coincidence that the stars are made of the same. So you are stardust, beautiful soul. Now, many of you may have been going through or are going through what is called ascension symptoms. I know I have, and they've been driving my ass crazy. Okay, so some of you have been experiencing migraines in the front lobe or the back lobe of your brain, your frontal lobe or your back lobe, or you have been experiencing pain like nobody's damn business in your crown chakra. Okay. Now, for everyone that has a crown chakra, it's not located in the same place for everyone. Like, everybody's crown chakra is not located above their head. Okay? Some of our crown chakras is located at the very back where the crowning of our head begins. That's where mine is. Also, I noticed there's like a little soft spot right in the middle of where my crown chakra begins that bad boy has been hurting for the last three weeks going on a whole fucking month now for me and that is because i am interconnected with multiple dimensions okay to give you an example of what i mean is i'm beyond 5d i'm beyond even the earth's frequency i'm in i'm working out of 15th dimension right now the 15th dimension you didn't even probably know it was 15 dimensions it's probably a total of 100 and 100 and some odd dimensions but <laughs> in masonry they say it's 33 when jesus died he was 33 and a half years old <clears throat> you have 33 vertebrae need i say more okay i'm just saying god's creation or the most high creation is so interconnected to the most high there's no way you can deny that there is a higher power okay now you may find yourself getting into it with people around you whether it's people that you know or people that you don't know in my case today it was with someone i don't even fucking know so i go to burlington because I'm looking for things from my mother's altar 
And Burlington got a lot of classy stuff for a really nice price. I even found her a gold angel for her altar. I was very excited about that. Now, I had already been in line. and I had already spent like $300, right? But there were some things in my cart that I let go. I had a lot of shit that I really didn't need. But I forgot to get these pair of black pants, okay? So I get back in line. And I asked the lady to check me out. Can I have the pants so I can pay for them? And, of course, I wasn't about to fucking stand back in that long-ass line. And why did this lady, when they called my name, this bitch took her cart. And as I was walking up, because I ain't had no cart, because I already shopped, like, you know, beforehand, like I, like I said. This bitch took her cart and was going up to the counter as I was going up to the counter. And when I got to the counter, this bitch was like, you cut me. I said, no, the, the fuck I did not. I did not cut you. She was like, yes, you did. I mean, she was being very combative with me. And finally, the cashier was like, look, lady, she did not cut you. She was already up here. Okay. I checked her out myself. She did not cut you. Do you know this bitch didn't even apologize or nothing to me? So I just said, I'm just going to let it go. And one thing that I have been reminded of by my mother's uh, best friend, by my auntie, and even a few other family members about my mom. My mother was a cancer just like me. My mother did not like confrontation. So the, her, one of her mantras, I would say, that she used to say all the time, it's okay, let it go. My mother will always say that. And a lot of people took advantage of her because of that too. Why am I saying this? Because chosen one, star seed, you are being tested in your ascension process right now. You're going to have motherfuckers test you who knows you. And you're going to have motherfuckers that test you who don't know you because they are troubled by your light that you carry. Not only is it the light that is troubling them, but your fucking power. Some people don't like to be overshadowed or cast aside. They like to be in a limelight. They like to be the center of attention. And if they feel that you're going to take that away from them, they're going to challenge you. So be prepared. Okay? This video does come as a warning. It's you're going to be more than tested. You're going to be thoroughly tested. You're moving out of this dense, <coughs> heavy body into this angelic, crystalline, silicone body. Okay? I've already kind of transformed into something like this years ago. Okay, I um, first upgraded my chakra system to Archangel Michael's whole chakra system because I was being attacked more than I would like to even count on a physical plane because of who I am. So Michael gave me his aura and the hexes, the juju, the spells and Whatever they threw at me, whoever threw it at me, it all started ricocheting. It all stopped. Okay. My biggest upgrade was after somebody did a death ritual on me or tried, let's say they tried to because it didn't happen. And the thing is, and this person don't even know. I know that they the one that did it. And this is why I don't talk to this person no more. I will never talk to this person. If I talk to this person, I will fuck their whole life up for eternity. And that is not what I'm here for. Okay. I'm a light worker. I'm a gatekeeper. But don't get it twisted. People think because you a light worker that you won't set it off in this bitch. Okay. 
I will. I don't care about me cussing. The cosmos don't care about me fucking cussing. God don't care about me cussing. You, man, ridiculer, judgmental motherfucker, you the only one to care. You know how many people I know that are even beyond me that cuss? Don't make you or break you. At least we ain't out here robbing, stealing, and killing. Committing adultery. You know. Committing heinous crimes out here. We doing the work of the Lord. Just like Cat Williams said. We got our side. And then it's the other side. We got God's side. Excuse me. And then it's the other side. I'm doing the work of the Lord, honey. I'm on God's side. So, you know, I have little trolls come every now and then to ask me, do I know the most high? Bitch, do you? Why are you here on my channel? Okay. So, you're going to be tested, thoroughly tested. The Bible speaks about this. This is all Bible prophecy fulfilling itself. <coughs> no one has to coerce it. The powers be, or that used to be, don't have to coerce it. It's going to happen. Habakkuk 2 2 is my favorite scripture. The appointed time is near and it will not delay. Okay. <coughs> um, I've been gone for these last two weeks because I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't know how my mama died. I still to this day don't know how my mama died, but she yet still is dead. I don't know who did it, but the person that did it is basically telling on his goddamn self because he's telling people that I'm going around saying that he killed my mother. And I never once did that besides when I caught him so we can set up the funeral arrangements and whatever animosity this motherfucker had towards me. I was asking him to put that aside so we could be adults about it. This motherfucker went off on me, started cussing at me. <laughs> Saying I wasn't there for my mama when that motherfucker was the one to cut me off from me for having a relationship with my mom four years ago. And something was like, as she was doing this shit, this motherfucker is really in his feelings. So I told him, I said, you know what? You're really in your feelings about this. He was like, I ain't in my feelings. I'm in my manhood. You're in your manhood. I just lost my mama. And you hollering and screaming at me. Didn't even once say, I'm sorry. That's not a man. I said, you're a fucking prick. He hung up on me. His daughter calls me. I didn't answer the phone. Because what am I arguing with anybody at this point for? I just lost my mama. I'm not about to sit up here and endorse your ghetto campaign. That's not who I am and that's not who I stand for, my mother. So I blocked her. And I text, well, before I blocked her, hold on, I text the person. I said, listen, just lost my mama. Don't know who you are, but do not come Incorrect with me right now. Because I will hand you your ass. Whoever you are. Promise you. And then she called back again. And left me a voicemail that time. That's when I blocked her. I didn't even listen to her voicemail until like four days later. Because I knew it was going to set me off. If that wasn't good enough. She used my brother. My oldest brother's daughter's cell phone. And her Facebook messenger. To call me. I'm like this bitch. So when I answered. I thought it was my niece. But it wasn't. So I was like hi Kai Kai. She was like nah this ain't Kai Kai. This is Lachelle. I said bitch. I already blocked you. What we're not going to do. Is we're not going to be beefing. My mama just died. 3.30 this morning, bitch. And if you press my buttons the wrong way, 
you're going to surely regret it for the rest of your life. So I hung up and then I blocked my niece. Because I just lost my mother. And you trying to fight me, bitch. What all types of crazy are you? Who does that? So when I tell you you're going to be tested, you may not be tested in a way that I was tested because all our tests look different and are different and they are specifically assigned to us. They are tailored <coughs> to us specifically. Okay. But God told me to get this message out because it ain't just Tyann, Dr. Tyann that's going to be tested. Some of you are going to be tested too. And baby, when I say you're going to be tested, it's nothing like you been through. Like this shit that, that just happened to me after the eclipse. I could not have dreamed or imagined that my mom was going to die three days before the eclipse. And when she died, there was two earthquakes. One in New Jersey, one in New York. I knew that my mama had something to do with that. Not the actual cause of it happening. But those were signs that the gods, and I yes, I said gods, not just one god. Because I work with multiple deities. That they put in the um, atmosphere for me. To remind me. Of my motherfucking power. Okay. That was a reminder. For me. To stay grounded. Stay connected. To the source. Stay connected. No matter what you are enduring. No matter what you are growing through. Or going through. Never forget your connection. With the divine. Because let me tell you something you guys. There's no way in the hell. That I will be here. On this broadcast, broadcasting to you only it hasn't even been 14 days since my mom passed. It's only been about 12 days now. No, 11 days. Okay. And yet here I am. So, with that being said, Last Friday was a week. And this coming Friday will be two weeks exactly. And her husband decided to already have her funeral rushing things because he thought he was going to get her insurance policy. Now. I told my brother not to go to the funeral. I know I certainly wasn't going to go, not because I was scared of him, but I was scared of what the fuck I might do. Okay. So God, the most high told me not to go. My brother went, do you know his father told him he could not go to the repass? He could not go to the recession of my mother because he was a snitch with me. And he told on the police, he told on his father to the police. First of all, I'm the one that told my brother everything. Second of all, the police told me everything. Things I did not know. <clears throat> and had I not contacted IMPD and the homicide department, I would have never found out all this stuff that I found out. And I know a lot on that man. That... It didn't sit well with me to go to my mother's funeral and knowing that that man had a hand in her passing. And this is not me suspecting you guys. This is not me projecting. This is not a personal vendetta. My mother came to me personally and told me the way she died. I wish she had not have done that, but I'm glad that she did because it helped me to protect me and my children's lives. I wasn't about to go there. From obvious reasons. Really 
no matter how I grow and I heal through this grieving process, which is a natural process when it comes to death, I'll never forget this. I'll never forget the way he acted. I'll never forget him telling me that I can't come into my mama's house to touch nothing. I'll never forget the fact that he threw out my son, my firstborn son, dead ashes. He told me, or he told my brother, because I, I haven't spoken to him since that day he hung up on me. He told my brother, he had my mom get rid of those ashes years ago. My, my family album when I was a baby, toddler, when I was in elementary, junior high, high school, adult, he had her throw them out. I call bullshit. I think he lying. Because, one, you can't lie to a psychic, bitch. I know when you telling the truth, I know when you lying. Because my intuition is lit. It's so damn lit. You don't even know, my nigga. Through remote viewing. Okay. I went back until the day, the, the whole incident, which I'm going to keep to myself what happened. <coughs> because, you know, some things I will share, but then there's certain things that you got to keep private. I went to the day everything transpired between him and my mom the argument and what they were arguing about and what happened that led her to get rushed out to the hospital which he didn't even call 911 until the next day but I digress it was very disturbing but it was very at the same time comforting because I know what happened exactly. I had to look at my mother as a client, you guys, instead of her being my mother. As if someone hired me to become a psychopomp for their family so they can get down to the bottom of what happened to their loved one. I've been hired 10,000 times over to do this. Why not do this for my mom? Why not? It was exactly the way that my mom told me. Everything that she said is exactly what I saw. My message, my mom's life could not be spared because her fate was sealed. I screamed at God, I cussed God out, I said, why in the fuck did you stop me from getting to my mother? And God told me, because I knew you was going to resurrect her. I knew you was going to save her life. And I knew that nothing was going to change. She was going to go back to her abuser and she was going to act like you never existed again because that's how much power he had over her because she didn't love herself. She did not love herself enough to walk away. All my mama wanted was love. My mama was a beautiful Chinese and black woman who would give her shirt off her back. If that was the last thing she had to give to someone who needed it, she would have done it. Not only was my mother unique looking because of her heritage, but her soul was unparalleled to none. I could say, before me and my mother became estranged, I had the best supportive mother that any child could ask for. I don't know why me and her soul agreed to us becoming estranged before her death, but all I could replay in my mind, and it was the most high who stopped me 
and told me, don't play that narrative again. Don't play that story again in your mind. It was me telling my mother I was not coming to her funeral. If she died, I wasn't coming. That became a self-fulfilling prophecy. I also used to tell her that her husband was going to be the death of her. I don't know how I knew, but I knew. And long behold, here we are. You know what? God said, vengeance are mine. There's so much that I could do to that man without physically even touching him. He don't know who I am, but my mama knows. My mother knew who I was without knowing. My mother knew subconsciously. Let's put it that way. When my brother died in 2018, my mother told me, I know you can bring him back to life. Bring him back to life. And I did. My brother cussed me out. Told me he didn't want to come back. I looked at my mom. I said, Mommy, I said, you have to honor this man. This man don't want to be here. And I can't violate his free will. <laughs> so I might have to let your son go. You're going to have to stop crying. And let your son go in peace. Please. I'm telling you. My mama wiped her tears from her face. And she looked at me. And she says, I trust you, Nikki. Because I know you, out of all people, know what you're doing. Before my brother even expired. My mother called me over to her house a week before my brother passed. My brother was there. My mother was there. They both begged me to help him with his health. I don't know why, but I said no. Yes, I do. I know why I said no now. Because me and my divine counterpart, when we were married, we healed my brother. We was over at his house every single day for a whole month until we completely healed his kidneys and got him off of dialysis. All that hard work we did for free. My brother didn't pay me a single dime and had more than enough money. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. But he was my brother. He's my older brother, so I kind of dismissed it. <coughs> that ain't even why I was salty. That's not why I refused to heal him again. His girlfriend got nervous because he was out in the streets again. Okay. My brother was a player. He had him some women. So he was back in the streets and she threatened him that she was going to put him out. If he continued to keep getting services from me to heal him, and why did she do that? Because shortly after me and my divine counterpart stopped administering to him and his health, he started to plummet and go back downhill. His high blood pressure came back. I got rid of that. That came back first. Then his kidney started falling all over again. So they changed his medicine, you know, and when they changed his medicine, they put him on a patch. All right. He put the patch on the back of his head or, or back of his neck like they instructed him to do. That night he had an aneurysm and he died. I told my mother, I said, you got a lawsuit. My mother never pursued it because that was at the beginning of her dementia. And the man she married was my my brother's father, but he's illiterate. Okay. He doesn't know how to read past second grade. Matter of fact, scratch that. He don't know how to read at all. Okay, he has a learning disability. Now, just to educate you, my other brother had 
a learning disability too. But he overcame it. Now, he reads at college level because he has two degrees. Because he got his degrees when he was in prison. He was sent to prison a long time ago, like 18 years ago. And not only do he know how to read, but he's very, you know, prolific. Very smart. But just because you have a learning disability does not mean you cannot overcome it. My mother was born with a learning disability, and so was a brother. My mother overcame it. My mother died with a master's degree in accounting. And three days before she died, they said she was counting her coins. That's what she always did. She was counting her coins. And then I called the homicide department trying to figure out how in the hell my mom died because yet and still, as of last Friday, it was seven days. And I still you know how the fuck my mama died. And I keep on hearing all these damn stories from her husband. Every time somebody asked me how she died, it was a different story. There's only one way a person dies. A person don't die five different ways. So I told IMPD, from what they told me, that she died of advanced stages of dementia. I said, as a doctor, I call bullshit. Ain't no motherfucker gonna fall. And then within 24 hours, their dementia advances to advanced stages of dementia. This is like a cancer patient having stage four cancer and they fall and the next day they die and they said it's because of complications of cancer. No, nah, no, nah, it don't work like that. I said, if you put that my mama died from advanced stage, uh, excuse me, from advanced stages of dementia on her death certificate, I'm going to own that whole motherfucking police department. Go on here. You and your quack ass doctor at Community East who signed off on the bullshit. Because the only reason why you're doing this, and this is not me playing a race car, baby. My lawyer's white. He said it is them. So it's because she's a black elderly because she's six. she was 68. They would still consider her elderly over 60. Woman. And no one cares. Had she been a white blonde woman, they wouldn't even try me with that bullshit. But I gave them enough smoke to let them know I'm not the one to fuck with. And I already have a lawyer just in case you want to play, bitch. So it's up to you how we going to do this. When I picked up my mama's death certificate, you know what it had on there? Because that's what she got hospitalized, quote unquote, for is her coughing. <laughs> and she was having seizures and shit and going into convulsions. But um, they've also found out, in addition to, in a lieu of that, she had uh, pneumonia. And with most people that have dementia, they forget to swallow, and the saliva and the fluid goes into their lungs. <clears throat> and most of them die from pneumonia before they die of dementia. But anyway, um, that's what they put on the death certificate. So I'm not saying that I'm 100% even okay with that. But at this point, what do you do? You know, for a whole week, I was on the phone with, all kind of people, the coroner's office, the, uh, the funeral home, IMPD, Community East, Community East, uh, medical records, the fire department, the homicide department. I was tired. I am tired. My lawyer told me when I went into his office, he was like, listen, we are not the fucking popo. We are not the police. We don't fuck with the police. We ain't even going to act like we even like the motherfuckers. At this point, do what you need to do for yourself and let this shit go. Just let it go. He said, I'm not saying not to mourn. I'm not saying not to grieve. But what has been done has been done. And you can't bring her back. 
please live. Please do what your mom is unable to do. And so here I am. Broadcasting in front of you beautiful people what I've experienced. Which has not been the best experience. Because not only am I experiencing this, but I'm experiencing this alone. I have no man. You know, I've had my exes, a few of my exes try to come back. I don't want none of them. <coughs> um, I don't. Because I remember what they did. And I don't want no more repeat lessons. I'm, I'm an enlightened being, okay? A very advanced soul. We don't repeat lessons. We revoke soul contracts over here. If it even looks slightly remotely close to what the fuck I've already been through before, it's getting revoked. Okay? <coughs> so... A lot of you, just like me, are experiencing loneliness. You're never alone. You got your spiritual team. You got your guides. You got your angels who love and completely adore you. Some of you are, in it, are even in relationships and feel alone. I feel you. I feel your pain because you're not comprehended. You're being misunderstood. You're being taken for granted because they don't know who you are, nor do they know what you're carrying. So sorry. I needed that water. My throat was dry. Um, so you are looking for your soul family, your soul mate, your higher level soul mate twin flame. You're looking for that completion. But you are the missing piece to the puzzle. Not them. You know, a lot of us have that destination syndrome. Well, I'll be happy. I'll be complete. Or I'll be whole once I'm in a relationship with soul. So once I have my divine counterpart, once I'm married, once I'm pregnant, once I have that career, once I'm completely connected with the source. You can be completely connected with the source now. You don't got to wait on that. <coughs> Go within. That's where God is. That's what the source is. You're not using your crystals anymore. Why? Some of you got crystals that you've had for years. They still put on the shelf or they're still in the windowsill or they're still put in the box stuffed away. You can use those crystals now to help you to move into a crystalline body because that's what they're here for. A lot of people will say, oh, crystals are bad. Crystals could be bad or good. Okay, just like any damn thing. Tarot can be bad or good. It's the way you use it. It's the way you choose to use it. Because in life, we have choices. Okay. I'm using every crystal I got. If it ain't on me, on my body, then they're on my altars or my windowsill. <coughs> but they're being utilized. Every single last one of them that I got that I own. And I just brought me five more bracelets. I brought me a, uh, what is it called? A golden jade bracelet. Uh, I brought me another 
venturing because mine that I had broke. I brought me a quartz crystal because that one I had broke. And I brought me a hematite aura because the one that I had broke. But I forgot the fifth one. I can't think of it right now. But anyway, yeah. I needed them in my life. I felt empty without them. And now that I have them, I feel complete. Because those are the crystals that I need now on this leg of my journey. Um, so divine being or beings, don't get it twisted. Ascension is not what you thought it was all love and light, all fluff and dust and unicorn forts and shit. That ain't what ascension is. Ascension is about being ripped apart inside out. Turn upside down, inside out. And reshaping and reframing your life into what it is that you are becoming and who you're becoming. I'm very grateful and thankful that I know who in the hell I am right now in the flesh as the goddess that I represent. And that I am. This is the reason why I was working with all these other deities and gods. Because that's what the fuck gods do. They work with each other. If you ever read any mythological stories. About gods and deities and whatnot. You will come to learn that they had counterparts. I'm not talking about lovers. I'm talking about other gods that had things that they didn't possess that they helped <laughs> and they did an energy exchange of service to one another to help each other to help each other ascend okay same thing goes for now these deities helped me to ascend Shiva helped me to transform and transmute that solar energy on the solar eclipse. I didn't use the solar glasses. I looked directly at the sun. I do it every day anyway. Why the fuck am I going to this one day not look at the sun directly? The fuck? I'm going to look at it more, even more so now because it's at its most powerful peak. We witnessed worldwide for those who could see the eclipse. The birth of the new sun. Yeah. Haven't you noticed it now that you go outside when the sun is shining, it's extra bright, like twice as bright as the old sun? If you haven't, I have. Okay. A lot of you have been experiencing what I call the solar eclipse symptoms. I've been experiencing it. One, I already told you about the pain in my crown chakra and the back of my head, that bad boy on the top and the back. Oh, Jesus, Lord. That bad boy. It was even, honestly, it was hurting before the solar eclipse, but after the solar eclipse, it stepped up a notch. And I had to channel and find out what the hell is going on. And it's because I'm still connected with multiple dimensions and it's happening on all levels. That's why it's so intense. Um, have you guys been zoning in and out of sleep? And what I mean by that, I'll go to sleep and then I'll end up waking myself back up. Involuntary. Okay. In and out, in and out, in and out. <laughs> like, I'm supposed to be sleeping, but then my self wakes me up. And I hear something that is in reference to maybe a question I asked and I needed to have the answer to, okay? Or 
I'll go back to sleep. Same. Now, this is all happening simultaneously. I want you to follow what I'm saying. This is happening in the same night. This is not different events, isolated events. Go back to sleep, wake up again. Somebody out here, someone on YouTube University, give me information about um, something I already know about, but then it will enhance my knowledge on it. Go back to sleep, wake back up. And I hear something about the love of my life. And I know that it's the love of my life because that's the only person I'm in love with. I'm not in love with no one else. I'm not in love with none of my exes. I don't want none of my exes. I'm not entertaining none of my exes. My exes are exes for a reason, but him and I got separated because of fate. Destiny got in the way. He went on his journey to do what he felt like he had to do, and I did the same. And that's that. But when it comes to the love that we have and we share, oh baby, that's still the same. That ain't going nowhere. So I would get confirmations about him coming back and us reconnecting and whatnot. And, you know, the unions near just the same old, same old stuff that you guys probably go through too. <clears throat> yeah. Which brings me to my next subject. You're not going to be lonely for long. Many of you are not. Okay. Many of you are already getting confirmations about your twin flame. How near they are. How close. A lot of you are even dreaming about your twin flame. Okay. These dreams may not all be pleasant. But still a sign that your twin is close. <clears throat> As you level up, they level up. As you step into your crystalline body, they step also into their crystalline body. You know? So, you guys, just trust the process. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. Being chosen doesn't mean you're going to always have favorable outcomes in your life. This is just a natural cycle of life, you guys. You have your good, your bad. You have your ups and your downs. Just when you're in the up and up and you have good happening, just be grateful. Just take out the time to be grateful. Even now, and if you're not even at that place where you're happy, happy, joy, joy. Because eventually you will be. And there's nothing wrong with being down, but just don't stay down for too long. Because troubles don't last always. I was so lonely today. It rained from yesterday um, in the morning until tonight. It didn't stop until 12 midnight. I'm very triggered by the rain. Me and my divine counterpart always made love when it rained. And um, it really triggered the shit out of me today. I'm not going to lie. I cried. I cried. And and I told myself, it's going to be okay. You're going to get through this. You're going to get through everything you're going through. Because that's the way that God designed it. That's the natural order of things. We've been made to endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So I'm going to leave you guys on that note. I'm going to try to incorporate some tarot and um, start putting up more. It won't be like a reading reading, but at least it'll be a short <clears throat> because I'm really not trying to dwell on divination so much as I am to helping your soul ascend. More focus on the ascension aspect, but I do realize that, you know, that does help to take the edge off. So I will give you that much, but I don't want you to heavily rely on my divine calling or me divining for you. 
I want all of you to start divining for yourself, looking in for yourselves. Because no matter what I tell you, you always know better. You know better than I even know. Okay, believe it or not. Start listening to yourselves. That's another message from the Most High. Stop violating your hunches. And you know something, and you know it to be so, but yet and still, you go against it. You go against it. Now, another thing I'm going to leave you with before I completely go, you're going to have people that probably absolutely love you, strangers and those that you know. <clears throat> Today, went back to Burlington because I couldn't fit everything in my truck because I already had some stuff in my truck that I bought back from Indiana that was on sale, some good stuff, girl. And, and man, oh my gosh. Yeah. I had to come back today to get the other stuff I didn't get a chance to get from my mom's altar. And um, this lady walked past me. She asked me, she was like, what do you have on? Because it smells so freaking good. And I told her, I got Hollister Festivals. And um, she came back. She had two of the Hollisters. And she asked me which one. And I told her, this is the one that you're holding on the left. She said, I cannot stop thinking about how good you smell. Like, oh, my God. So now she got it. I didn't gatekeep. I don't ever gatekeep. I ain't never been a gatekeeper on nothing unless it's something that is high occult magic. And I feel that, you know, people need to pay for the information because some things you just don't give away for free, especially things that would change people's lives for the rest of their lives. I remember talking to my best friend on the phone earlier today. He was talking about my magic and the difference between certain rituals and the reason why I have different price for those rituals that I do that are higher called magic because the ones that are higher called magic, they last for years. You don't have to do them every so many months like most of these witches be doing. And they only last like 90 days. No, my rituals last at least five years. At least, that's the minimum. It don't matter what ritual you do with me. Unless it's like a attunement. Attunements, they last they last a while, but they, I've never I've never done um an attunement that did not last at least a year. At least. But it's always good to get attunements because on attunements your your chakras are being aligned. And you need to align your chakras every now and then. At least once a week. So I do have clients that are regular clients to come and get an Archangel Michael to me once a week because they deal with people at work. They deal with people, you know, in general. And they are empaths and they take on those energies and it's not good. It really isn't. So I have at least 20 clients that I know. That at least get a Michael, an Archangel Michael attunement, like once a week. Okay, y'all. It is officially two twenty two a.m. As I look at the clock, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off from here. See what angel number that is for you. Whether you want to look it up as just an angel number or what it means for your soulmate, what it means for your tone flame, etc. However you do it. But I'm going to leave you on that note. All right. Namaste.